folks. Okay, we have something really cool that I think you're going to really, really like. If you have ever used a one-shot color camera and taken some dual narrowband data to capture HF and Oxygen 3, you may have wanted to turn that image into a Hubble palette look. Now, the process to do that, um, it can be done. It's a manual process in PixInsight. However, there is a new super fast uh, drag and drop way to do it, and it's uh, looking pretty snazzy, I think. So, um, before I get into it and show you guys how it works, which is really easy to do, um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of background here on things. So. Back in 2020, I had released a video. It was one of the first ones actually out that showed how to take your one-shot color data and turn it into a Hubble palette image. That uh, was well received and a lot of people were happy to be able to do that. And I saw a lot of images online, people using that technique. There were people that followed suit later on that uh, demonstrated their technique for doing the same thing creating a Hubble palette image out of a one-shot color data set. People like Luke over at Luco Matico on YouTube, um, he actually came up with a different way of doing it that works equally as well. My technique involved uh, separating the channels out, red, green, and blue, uh, renaming them accordingly, and uh, doing some masking, integrating them and doing some masking and, and so forth, and you could create a Hubble palette image. But now we have another way to do this, which is really super simple, drag and draw. And that's thanks to Bill Blanchan, who, um, as far as I'm concerned, is a pixel math uh, genius. And uh, he really knows his stuff when it comes to pixel math. And uh, so he came up with this, uh, this technique that allows you to drag and drop um, uh, a pixel math icon onto your one-shot color image uh, data and produce a Hubble palette image from it that you can tweak a little bit and, and save and share with friends. So it's pretty cool. So let me show you how it works. And... And um, I'm just going to give you a, a brief, a quick overview to keep this video short. If you want more in-depth information as to the background on this, how Bill uh, came to uh, create it and uh, how it works exactly, uh, you can check out his YouTube channel. I will put a link in the description below to Bill's channel so that you can uh, check it out. I think his video is about 35 minutes long covering it. But what you're basically going to need to know, uh, I'm going to show you right now coming up next. So let's uh, switch over to PixInsight and we have PixInsight open here with a one-shot color image. Um, this image here is of IC5070 and I took this image with um, my Esprit 100 and a QHY 268C one-shot color camera. Uh, I used an L-Extreme filter in this case, so a dual narrowband filter that was capturing the H-alpha and the oxygen-3 signals, and we end up with an image that looks like this. Um, pretty red, uh, nothing too spectacular overall, but we can actually make this uh, pop really nice and uh, look fantastic. So the proper steps that, that I would do, Bill's technique for creating the Hubble palette uh, image from your one shot color data works best on a stretch image he says. So what I would do is uh, import the uh, image into PixInsight, crop it, do a dynamic background extraction on it. Um, I would uh, uh, stretch it and I would apply noise exterminator. I use noise exterminator for this. If you don't have noise exterminator, definitely check it out at rcastro.com, I believe it is, rc-astro.com. Um, I'll put a link in the description for you as well for that, uh, just in case. But uh, noise exterminator is really fantastic, something to definitely, uh, definitely pick up. Um, so I did noise exterminator on it. I also did star exterminator to remove the stars and then I did some slight curve transformations just to bring up some of the uh, the details in the nebula region um, and then I applied um, I, I, I'm gonna go and apply uh, Bill's uh, pixel math to the image that will allow me to create a uh, Hubble palette image out of this so let's do that so if we look over here um, I've got some of uh, Bill's process icons here. These are the ones that we're interested in in particular. So the one that we're going to be applying to this image here right now is the HOO. So hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 in the respective channels and this is 
going to be pretty fantastic. So just watch this. So I'm going to just drag and drop this onto my one shot color image and Bill's pixel math goes to work and we end up with this image here, which we've got a Hubble palette uh, look going on with the, uh, the image now. And we can then take this and we can tweak it a little bit so we can add some saturation to it. We can adjust the curves. We can, you know, take out some of the green, maybe add a little red, stuff like that. Let me just show you that real quick and uh, you can get an idea of how well this uh, works. So if we want to uh, add a little saturation to this image, we can go to the intensity transformations, curves transformations transformation and uh, just my curves transformation went on my other screen bring it back over here um, so what we'll do is we'll go to saturation open a real-time preview and we'll give it a little bit of saturation and you can see that the image is getting a boost of saturation I might give it uh, another little bit just a tad I don't want to overdo the saturation but to bring out some of those colors and really make things uh, pop. So there we've got some saturation applied. Um, we can knock out some of the green if we want. Now you can use SCNR to do that um, and, and take out the green, but that's a pretty aggressive way to do it. Um, you can also just uh, manually do it if you want. Just knock the green back just a little bit like that and maybe you could maybe give it a touch Maybe just a touch. You don't want to take out too much, but we want just a little bit. This is all to taste, of course, uh, art, artist prerogative, and uh, you can uh, approach it how you want to, but you can knock out some of the green there. You can go as much or as little as you like. Uh, some people like to have keep the green in their image. Some people, uh, some people don't. So we'll just do that just to show you, and uh, we'll maybe give it a touch of red just to fire it up a little bit there we go there we got some great detail happening um, especially we've got some great uh, contrast and colors happening here in the the uh, the dark nebula area um, and uh, the uh, the the blue is looking great and the uh, the golden orange is looking really nice uh, I think this is a really fantastic way of achieving a Hubble palette look with your one-shot color data and it's super simple to do as I just showed you so um, there there you go basically so we've got uh, We've got a Hubble palette image that uh, we've created very easily by just dragging one of uh, Bill's uh, pixel math icons onto the, uh, onto the image. Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you're finding it helpful, then please give it a like, a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Really would appreciate that. I'm Sean Nielsen of VisibleDark.ca and this is my YouTube channel where I discuss PixInsight and astro-related topics, including product reviews. Okay, so that is a normalization technique working with one-shot color data and turning it into a Hubble palette-like uh, image uh, using using Bill's HOO uh, technique. Now, I wanna show you another one of Bill's normalization techniques, which you can use on actual uh, show data. So sulfur two, H alpha, and oxygen three taken with a monochrome camera. Um, this is really cool too, and it makes things uh, so much simpler and, and so much easier to do. So let me just dive in and show you real quick how this is done. All right, so we're in Pix and Sight again, and I've got uh, two icons actually that I'll be showing you here. Uh, this is the show normalization icon that Bill has created, and this is the one that will do the magic, work the magic uh, for uh, fixing the colors and, and boosting the oxygen three, the the blue in the image. So if we take our individual channels here, we can see that uh, the H alpha is, has a very strong signal to it, which is going to give us a lot of green when we combine because the H alpha channel goes into the, the uh, green channel when you're combining it uh, into an RGB uh, space. Um, the O3 is rather weak and we want to boost that. That's what Bill's normalization technique is going to do for us here. And the S2 isn't bad but it's not as strong as the H alpha is. So what do we do? Well if we combine 
these channels into an RGB color space, we get this here and it's it's a, just a very green image and we'd have to do some curves tweaking of the color channels um, in order to um, make it look like a Hubble palette image. But we don't have to do that anymore because Bill's made it really easy for us. So. We're going to use Bill's icon here and we're just going to drag and drop it onto the image and I'm not going to change any settings in it. I'm going to show you though that you can change some settings and get some slightly different results depending on the initial result that you get. So if I take at default settings and drop the show normalization icon onto my image, it's going to go to work and it is going to produce this result for us. There. Okay, so we've got this result here, and it looks good. Um, I mean, we're getting there. We'd have to do some tweaking in that. We've, it's it's obviously got a lot of green uh, in it still. Not near as much green. If we go back one step, we can see the the complete change that's occurred. So it's uh, it's it's uh, um, normalized the channels for us, and it's brought up the uh, the oxygen channel quite nicely. We can see that uh, we're we're getting uh, the oxygen showing here, um, but um, we're also sort of enhancing some of the noise too that's in the image. The, uh, the 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 low-level noise uh, we're, we're kind of boosting that at the same time and I don't really want necessarily if I, I ran into some that uh, it gave me the the oxygen gave me more of a purple hue to it and I want more of a blue hue so let me show you what you can do uh, using Bill's uh, technique that uh, will um, um, solve some of those problems basically so um, if I just revert back here to the initial state where I didn't apply the uh, show normalization and I double click and open Bill's uh, icon here uh, for it you're gonna see under the symbols tab um, you, know, you can see obviously here um, all of the uh, the code uh, the, the pixel math and stuff that goes into it in the various channels but if you go under symbols he's actually allowed you to make some adjustments so you can you can actually have control over your s2 channel the o3 boost um, the brightness control and the the uh, s curve now the s curve is going to allow us the s curve is turned on right now if you look over here under this tab um, it indicates right here on the symbols page you can turn off s curve or turn it on so right now the s curve is off so it's just basically doing a um, it's doing a blanket approach in applying this normalization technique and it's not uh, necessarily uh, considering the uh, the, the low-level noise that uh, can be boosted as well, but we can fix that by doing a, an S-curve, applying an S-curve to the S2 and the O3 channels, which is what this, uh, this allows us to do. So if we go back to symbols here, and we basically uh, turn on the S-curve, so we've set it to one, one value is on, zero is off. So we've set it to one and we have a brightness control. If we feel that the, uh, the overall result is too, uh, too bright, things are getting uh, over, overdone, overcooked, um, you can bring this back. So let's just knock it back to, uh, you know, 15% to 0.85 and we will apply this to the image and see the uh, result that we get which is going to be a, a very nice improvement so you'll definitely want to experiment a little bit with this and uh, see what's going to work great every image is going to be a little different so you're going to have to do some experimenting but the uh, the reality is that it's been made um, producing your Hubble palette uh, images has been made uh, so much easier now what we have here, I'm just going to close this icon off. Um, this is the end result. So we've got green still and we've got a little more uh, bluish uh, going on, but it's still kind of purpley. But we're going to get rid of that. We're going to use the uh, modified SCNR approach, which uh, basically allows us to uh, remove the green from the image, but preserve uh, the luminosity that uh, that exists within the image. So um, that's something that the uh, the built-in SCNR tool for PixInsight doesn't consider. But in this pixel math, uh, the luminosity the is considered so that uh, it's not... Um, 
it's not overdone basically now uh, just to give some credit here real quick again uh, Bill revised the pixel math that uh, James Lamb had actually uh, come up with so the concept of this modified SCNR is James Lamb uh, Bill took that uh, and modified it slightly and uh, produced this for us so we can easily apply it and really all you have to do uh, the defaults work pretty good but again you can tweak it if you need to but I'm just going to use the defaults and drop it onto the image and we'll let it uh, go to work and uh, correct the uh, green that exists within this image okay so there is the result that we got removing the green using the modified SCNR uh, pixel math and as you can see um, it's improved things quite a bit we've got a lot more blue going on in the uh, oxygen end of it and uh, we can now uh, do some tweaking of this image we can uh, adjust the curves we can adjust the saturation we can uh, adjust uh, other channels uh, tweak things a little bit uh, as we want to so definitely check out Bill's video if you're interested in more information more details details with regards to these uh, pixel math techniques, normalization techniques that he's developed. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Big shout out to Bill again for producing these uh, pixel math normalization techniques for us. Um, really makes things easy, simplifies things. Bill actually has some other uh, pixel math uh, techniques that you can use as well for star reduction as example, um, which work really well, and also adding your, your stars back into your image, which uh, um, works really well too. I was actually testing it a little bit for him when uh, he was is developing it so you might want to check those out as well when you're uh, cruising through uh, having a look at uh, having a look at his channel there on YouTube and I would just like to give a big shout out to all the Patreon supporters that uh, are supporting this channel and helping bring new content and new videos and uh, so forth for everybody's benefit. Uh, really appreciate those people, those Patreon supporters, and of course everyone, all the subscribers to the channel that uh, keep on watching and uh, your, your positive comments uh, are always welcome and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate all of you. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. So we'll see you again real soon. Take care for now and clear skies.